Hey guys, welcome to today's video. Today I want to talk about cord extensions. What are they and why are they good to know? Some of you watching this video may have been playing guitar for a year or two, maybe three years now. And if that's the case, then the chances are that you have a good grasp on open string chords and bar chords that you, you know, used to play songs with. But after a while, the same old chord types and chord voicings could start to get a little bit boring and you might find yourself wanting to branch out. Let's first define the difference between a chord type and a chord voicing before you move any further. A chord type refers to the tonality of the chord. Is it major, is it minor, dominant, diminished, or augmented? And a chord voicing is how the chord tones, meaning the notes of the chord, how they are arranged from low to high. So for example, is the root in the bass, is the third on the G string, is the fifth on the high E string. For example, here's a standard C major seventh voicing. In this voicing, the root is on the low E string, the seventh is on the D string, the third is on the G string, and the fifth is on the B string. That's a very standard voicing to use for that chord type. But there are so many more ways to play that same chord, to play those same notes, but in different ways. For example, here's a voicing that has the root note on the B string. And here's one that has the root note on the G string. So if you already know a couple of voicings for each of the chord types that I mentioned earlier, that's a good start. But there are a lot of other voicings out there that you can learn. And that's a big part of what I teach in my new upcoming course, Bulletproof Guitar Player Part 2. You'll pick up from where you left off in Bulletproof Guitar Player Part 1, which means you'll learn new voicings for chord types that you already know, if you've gone through that course, that is. More voicings for major 7th, minor 7th, dominant 7th chords, and some others. And then you will be introduced to new chord types, including extended, altered, and suspended chords. And that leads me to my next point, which is what the title of this video is all about. Extended chords, what are they? I think of extended chords as being chords that contain added tones from the scale that they are based on. So for example, a C major seventh chord could actually be viewed as an extended version of a C major chord, because the formula for a C major chord is 1, 3, 5. And if you make that a C major 7th chord, you extend it by adding the 7th to that formula. So 1, 3, 5 gets extended to 1, 3, 5, 7. But to me personally, I view major 7th and minor 7th chords as just normal chords because they're so commonly used, even though they are technically extended chords. But what comes to mind first when I think of extended chords is a chord or a basic chord that contains chord tones that aren't the one, three, five, or seven. So that leaves you with a basic chord that contains a second, a fourth, or a sixth, or a combination of those. An example would be a major six chord. Here's a voicing for this chord type. The formula for this chord is one, three, five, six. So it's just like a major seventh chord, but instead of having a seventh, you have a major six. Or how about a major ninth chord? Here's a voicing for that chord type. The formula for that chord type is one, three, five, seven, nine. What's a ninth? Well, a ninth is basically the second degree of the scale. It's a major second. But in the context of chords, it's tradition to call the two, the nine, the four, the 11, and the six, the 13. If you want to know why that is, then a quick Google search for compound intervals will tell you all you need to know. So those were just a couple of examples of extended chords. Of course, there are plenty more out there, not just for major chords, but for minor and dominant chords too. So to finish up, I want to show you how using extended chords can dramatically change the sound of any chord progression. So I'm gonna play over the same chord progression twice, 
The first time I play it, I'm going to use basic cards, and then after that, I'll use extended versions of those cards. So hopefully you guys notice the difference there. Extended cards are just a really great way of dressing up chord progressions. That's not to say that basic bar cards and open string cards don't have their place. I still use them all the time in my playing, but extended cards are just great for those moments where you feel like adding something a bit more interesting sonically to the track that you're playing over. If you guys are interested in learning more about extended cards, altered cards, suspended triads, as well as some scale based material like modes of the major scale and how to actually use them in your playing, then make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Just click the subscribe button below. And if you want to, you can click the bell button beside the subscribe button as well and you'll be notified anytime I upload a new video. And that way you'll be the first to hear about the release date for my new course, Bulletproof Guitar Player Part 2. If you're interested in the first course, um, the link to that is in the description down below. That gets you 50% off. If you like this video, please smash that like button down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.